Hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you uh, how I created this layout. So as you can see I have put a bunch of my creations and tutorials that I've shown you before like mostly the loading bars uh, into this kind of layout. Uh, one of the things that is lacking here is basically two arrows you know to the left and right where you can sort of navigate through uh, all of these uh, loading bars that I've created and I will kick start this tutorial series by creating those arrows but uh, anyways I want to show you how this works so basically we have this panel over here uh, which shows the uh, animation itself also you can click on this CSS you can see the CSS code for it you can see the HTML code for it and also using these sort of navigation uh, circles down here you can navigate to the next one uh, for each of these also you can see the CSS and you can see the HTML and you can go ahead and click on all of these each one contains a sort of a loading uh, animation that I've created either shown as a tutorial or created sort of by myself uh, and uh, yeah I hope you enjoy it so let's get started I'm gonna go to kotus.com slash codity as always and I'm going to create a new prototype closing down this and uh, in this layout I am going to create a div with a class arrow and then going back to my CSS, maybe I'm going to change my view to uh, this layout. It's easier to see. And then in my CSS, I'm going to define my CSS class. I'll give it a width of 30 pixel and height of 30 pixel. Maybe giving it a background of 0, 0, 0, which is black. And uh, that's good enough. Now I'm using the sudo element after to create another sort of uh, uh, tr uh, basically square. Sorry if I said circle, it's a square. And here I'm going to say I don't want any content for my sudo element. Uh, I want the position to be absolute. And then I'll give it a, uh, let's say, background of white because that's the background of the page that I have and uh, what I'm going to do is that I'm giving it a top of uh, 10 pixel and then left of 10 pixel you don't see anything because when you define pseudo elements you definitely need to define the position relative on your parent uh, sort of class or the main class which is arrow here one of the things I'm missing right now is defining a width and height for this so I'm gonna give it a width of a bigger size of my original or my main arrow class by defining 40 pixel and height of 40 pixel right so now you can see that the after element is kind of overlapping my main element uh, by a bigger width and height and the top and left of 10% a 10 pixel and 10 pixel so the only thing I need to know to do right now is to transform or rotate this element minus 45 pixel so going back to my uh, main class arrow here I'm gonna say transform rotate minus 40 minus 45 degrees right now you can see that I have a pretty nice arrow down here what I need to do now is uh, I'm gonna create another arrow here and give it a class uh, let's say um, right because this is the left and this is the right I can do this left as well so what I want to do is move these arrows the first one to the left here in the center vertically and the other to the right center vertically pointing to the right right so I have a left and right here defined what I'm gonna do for the right one I'm gonna just rotate transform so here's the here's the problem I want to rotate this right 180 pixel 180 degrees to point to the other direction right but I already created a rotation 
on my arrow class, right? So I cannot basically, so what I need to do is, well, change the, one thing I can do is change the transform rotation here from minus 45 degree to 135 degree, right? And it kind of points to the other direction. The other thing is that I can add, I can create a container class for my arrow and then play with that, keeping my original transform uh, rotation to be minus 45 degree. But this is good for now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to define a top 50% and I need to change the position to be absolute, right? So I, I cannot use uh, uh, sort of uh, relative anymore because I, I want to use the uh, absolute position. And now what I need to do is basically uh, moving my right by defining like uh, left to be using a calc function 100% minus 40 pixel maybe and now you can see that I have my arrows kind of aligned to the right and my left one which is the original arrow uh, to the left right as easy as that I can pretty much define a uh, left here to be maybe 20 pixel to move this one and then also changing this to maybe a bigger, maybe 60, to kind of move it a little bit inside so that it looks good, right? And the whole idea here is that I'm going to use these arrows here so that not only one can uh, navigate through these ones, but also using those one, it goes to the next one and the previous one, right? So this is one way of doing that. The problem though here is that as you can see if I maneuver over different page pages it has they, they all have different colors right so this one is blue this one is like you know another shade of blue this one is white the problem is that if I go here and change my body background to be let's say tomato you can see what happens since I define the after elements to be white I need to go again on the after elements here, uh, after element here, and change it to the same color as my background, right? And that is like kind of useless when I have this kind of navigation changing to different colors because each of these uh, pages are like different divs, and I don't want to create like depending on how num how many numbers do I have here, let's say twelve, I don't or eleven, I don't want to create eleven arrows. I want to use one arrow. So this technique is pretty much useless. The other way to do that is using SVG, right? And I'm gonna kick start by giving a width of let's say 60, which is 60 pixel and height of 60 pixel. Uh, sorry, like this, 60 pixel. And then just to show you how it looks, I'm gonna give it a maybe a white background so on my SVG I'll give it a white background like FFF we, we can see it over here now what I need to do is define a path element and then defining the attributes of how I want that path to look like right so I'm gonna move my pointer my imaginary pointer to around here using 10 on x-axis and 0 on y-axis so x-axis y-axis so 10 pixel 10 pixel here but nothing on the y-axis and I'm gonna start drawing a line uh, from that point to 30 uh, on x-axis and 0 on y-axis right so I started right here I created a line over here it's not visible right now and then I want to create a line from here to in the middle of here. So I'm going to create a new line and I will say 60 on x-axis because it's at the end of the width of my SVG and then 30 on my y-axis which is the middle of this. And I need to pretty much reverse these uh, lines so that now I'm going to create a new line. This time I want on the x-axis I want to be 30 and on y-axis I want to be 60 right so I've already created this now I go 
uh, relative to my x-axis, I'm going to go 10 pixel to the left or basically creating a line to 10 or actually 20 pixel, 10 and 60, right? Now I have this. Now I'm my, my imaginary uh, pen is right now here. Now I'm going to move all the way here. So it's going to be uh, creating a line to, let's say, 40 on y, on x, sorry, and then 30 on y. And then creating a line back to the original position, which is 10 and 0, right? And now you can see that I have an arrow. By removing my uh, SVG background here, you can see that I have this arrow. I can definitely use transform scale to make it smaller, 0 0.5. Uh, or 0 0.9 or 8 or maybe 7 is better maybe 6 and the good thing is that even if I go and change my background right here to let's say maybe blue violet you can see that I need to for these elements that I created using CSS I have to go and change this but this one doesn't need it right it perfectly blends with my background right but as you can see the difference here if I'm going to remove this the difference here, and maybe changing it back to tomato, the difference here is that the shape of this arrow is different from this arrow. Well, some of you might like this, but I'm going to create exactly like this. So the difference is that in the beginning, I moved to 10 and 0, so 10 and 0, nothing on y-axis, but now based on this or maybe this, you can see that I actually need to start from uh, something else here, maybe 20 and 10. You can see that now I have created the, I moved over here, so 20 and 10, and then I started drawing uh, the line to 30 and 0. The same way I need to do it when I'm here. So we know that we are on 30 and 60, on 60 and 30 over here, and coming back to 30 and 60 down here, but now instead of going to 10 and 60, I'm going to go to 20 and 50. Now you can see that I have this SVG path. For those of you who doesn't have a clue on what these things are, I have already created a tutorial on how to create lines and stuff. So I'm going to put the link over here. Please go ahead and check it. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to use this SVG sort of uh, uh, element that I created over here. Uh, create two, put one here, one there, and then I will create the interactivity to sort of use those arrows to go back and forth on these cool elements. For those of you who are interested on how I created this, the cool thing with Codity is that it has an embed functionality uh, that you can use uh, right over here, for example, to kind of embed your code into other pages. And it gives you an iframe, as you can see over here, where you can define different attributes like uh, things like, you know, the header text color of that, uh, the accent color, which is this one, and sort of blend it nicely with the pages you want to put your uh, code sample on it. Uh, anyways, it was just an introduction. I'm going to show you in a very thorough tutorial on how to actually create this embed and paste it in your HTML pages to create this kind of cool thing where you can have your results but also you can provide your CSS, uh, HTML and whatnot to the users to kind of take a look at those um, areas. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know if you have any questions uh, and any issues with this tutorial. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do. In the next couple of tutorials, I'm going to talk about the next steps, which is the actual layout that I've created using these guys. And then also how I use the embedding functionality of Codity to kind of put my code down here to be visualized this way. I hope you have a great day or night and see you next time. Goodbye.